Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to another of my videos. In this video I'm going to be doing an installation of Kingston memory into my Asus X54C. You've probably seen the first video which was basically unboxing an overview of the laptop. And here I'm going to be installing this memory into the laptop. And uh, we're going to tell you later why I'm installing this. We're going to do some performance tests on that. So yeah. First of all, ASUS does not provide too much information about how to open up this laptop and where the memory is. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So basically you have to turn it over. And on the bottom side you have this big latch there with the keyboard symbol beside this rubber feet or foot. And that's where your SD card mount is and that's your, where your ins and outs for audio is. So basically this has to come off. First, you're going to have to undo these two screws, so give me a second there. Okay, then I'm going to try to drop them both down. Okay, both screws are out. A bit fiddly process there, but anyway. Okay. Why do you have to drop the screws out? Because you have to slide this thing away and basically out of the laptop. And when the screws are in, you basically can't do that. It could slide a little bit and then the screws be stuck and it's a very fiddly process. But anyway, it's removed now. As you see, it has little kind of plastic bits sticking out and little hooks right here as well. So it slides out. Anyway that aside so inside what we have here is here is your hard drive which can be replaced by SSD here is the RAM slot one slot one is soldered in and here is your wireless card basically if I'm not mistaken which can be replaced by probably Bluetooth model and things like that now it's up to you to look it up but anyway so to install memory, you just need to slide uh, slide it in into the slot. So first, I'm going to try to remove this memory without cutting myself, preferably. Now, before I install this memory, what I have to do is remove the battery. So slide it open and remove. Not to forget it, guys, you can remove the battery before the whole installation. It's up to yourselves. Now, before I forget, um, don't touch the RAM modules with your fingers or the contacts. So you basically hold it like so and try to remove it. And there you go. Once again, a bit fiddly process, but got some just dust. And yeah, that's the RAM module. So to slot it in, first make sure where your groove is. So in my case, it's towards the right. On the laptop, it's towards the left. It means I'm holding it the wrong way. So it has to go like this. Basically, just put it in. Slot it. Push it down. Just make sure it's firm. And then the clips. So basically when, when it's at the angle, you push it in, you push it down if everything's correct, these clip, and basically your RAM modules are in place. Well, in this case, only one RAM module, but if there were more, it's the same installation for all of them. Now, so that's pretty much done. I'm gonna close the latch here, and uh, I'll put the screws in. Now, if you're not sure, you don't really have to secure the screw straight away because obviously if there were, there were some errors in the installation process, you'll have to reboot the laptop or should I say switch it off and then undo this latch and do it again. Okay, so the battery goes in. Make sure you secure it. And the laptop is ready to be powered on. So let's start it. Okay, so the good news is the laptop starts. 
So chances are the RAM module was accepted. So give me a minute there. I'm going to boot up into Windows and we're going to resume from there. And we're back. So just to check if the installation procedure was okay. I go into my computer, properties. And well, I have one, eight gigabytes of memory. So now we can benchmark the laptop and see how it performs. All right, guys, and we're back. So for the performance results, basically what I've done there is uh, ran Super PI uh, mod 1.5 XS. You can download it for free and run it yourselves. I also ran Crystal Disk Mark 3.0.2 x64 version and the Performance Test 8.0. Now all of these benchmarks are free for you guys to use. Um, some of them might be limited for number of days, but still you can run them. And the first one, Super PI, uh, is basically the performance of your CPU, but it also tests your RAM, so it's very good for stability testing. Crystal Disk Mark is basically for your hard drive or your SSD, whatever you're using. Performance Test is overall test, which is not so accurate in terms of the benchmark results, but still you can guys uh, you guys can run it and see the results and compare to this laptop. And the performance info is basically just the Windows index. Um, some of you might be interested in that. And at the moment I have 4.6, but I'm just refreshing that just to make sure it works. And um, yeah, actually while that's going, I can show you some results because it doesn't require any processing power there. So Super PI um, ran for 15 minutes and 52 seconds for 32M or million of something. Now guys, I'm not sure what that um, benchmark is, is testing exactly, but basically the highest number was calculated in 52, sorry, 15 minutes and 52 seconds. So that's that. Crystal disk mark for sequential reads. Um, let's see, we got 104 megabytes per second max, and for the write was 100.1, let's say, 101 uh, megabytes per second, and the other results are there as you can see. So pretty low, but again, guys, this is a hard drive and a laptop hard drive. You pretty much expect that much. And um, performance test was the next and basically for this computer I got 1240 marks um, and that breaks down in CPU 2783 marks and 2D graphics 425 marks 3D graphics 320 marks memory mark was 1654 and this mark was 754 so once again you guys can compare it to your result i'm just about to finish this before i uh, when i ran it i got cpu 6.5 uh, ram 7.2 graphics 4.6 gaming graphics 6.1 primary hard disk 5.9 so overall not too bad no graphics obviously low because this is uh, Intel HD 3000 um, integrated um, GPU, which is basically uh, running off the CPU die. And yeah, just waiting for that to finalize and that'll be your final result. Um, and next I'm going to show you how else you can um, use that extra RAM. Now, obviously, in terms of the performance of the speed of the PC, extra RAM helps when you don't have enough RAM, so basically running uh, memory hungry applications, sometimes games, obviously not on this uh, laptop, but maybe uh, you're editing a huge photo, opening a big Excel or spreadsheet or multiple uh, documents and things like that. So when you run out of the RAM space, it starts addressing hard drive, which is much, much slower. I'm going to show it to you a bit later. And that basically impacts your performance. So when you add extra RAM, in, in this case, eight gigabytes RAM for this laptop is plenty. Now, the biggest bottlenecks would be the CPU and the hard drive. Hard drive probably be first. You can replace it with SSD. As for CPU, you can't replace on the laptop, uh, not easily enough anyway. So that's pretty much it. But anyway, the cheapest um, performance boost would be RAM. And just waiting for that to finish. So give me one sec there.
right and it's done so slight change there but anyway the figures are nearly the same now I'm gonna switch everything off crystal disk marks so remember these numbers there we're gonna do some other benchmark now what else you can use your RAM so you can use it for the RAM disk I'll show it to you what it is. Uh, Radeon RAM Disk is a free software which allows you to basically have your own RAM disk of up to four gigabytes. So you type, you type there 4,092 megabytes, um, select the FAT32 partition. Now I'm going to do it now and Windows boot sector and we're going to start it. After that, you can explore more options there, like load and save image and things like that. But anyway, once that's done, I have four gigabytes of RAM drive. And if I look at my memory in the Windows Task Manager, I'm using over five gigabytes. So basically, there's four gigabytes taken for the RAM drive. Once I stop it, I can choose to save it to the image. So basically, it goes to my designated drive and saves it into the drive. But while I'm using it should be really fast and let's see that theory does it really work so give me a minute there by the way before I forget make sure you select the RAM drive obviously so in my case the drive F 4084 megabytes and run and we back so I'm just finalizing running this test so guys as you see the performance is uh, increase is huge now you might say, why don't I use it all the time? Well, first things first, uh, the RAM drive uh, runs on the RAM and it's a volatile memory. So what would happen is, if you to lose uh, electricity power basically, all your data on the RAM drive would be wiped. Secondly, even if you're running on the laptop and the, or other battery powered device and you more or less sure that that won't happen, Normal RAM modules don't have an error correction and what that means is the RAM drive can start generating errors. Now, it's unlikely that you're going to run into real world uh, issues, but still something to consider. And obviously it can run only from Windows. So first you have to start the Windows, then you have to start the RAM drive, which would increase the time of your computer startup. So it's not that big of a plus really um so yeah but it's something to try and uh, especially if you're working with the graphic software of some sort it might help you it uh, it did help me a bit there when i was doing some youtube video and i needed small files but i needed a, a fast read times and that did help especially if your hard drive is so slow that you can't watch particular videos even you can put them on the RAM drive and watch it that way. But anyway, I'm going to skip to the conclusion and um, we're going to talk about what do you think about the performance of this uh, laptop. Now guys, just finished by the way the 4K QDEP32. Um, benchmark results are like this. Now for some reason last time the result did not finish properly. I had to wait for ages and um, this time it was no problem. I benchmarked and it showed. Um, just to make sure it does the same again, I'm just gonna run it and I'm gonna summarize the whole experience. So guys, overall the laptop is great for what I'm using it for. Now if you want to do video editing, light video editing is okay. But if you want to do some effects, or something like that on it, it's a no-no because the CPU is too fast. You will need an SSD. Um, RAM is kind of okay once you add another 4 gigabytes maybe but once again you know you have bottlenecks from CPU size uh, CPU sorry and then you have to replace the uh, the drive with the SSD so another investment so might as well invest into something faster straight away and maybe with more RAM so you can use it as a RAM drive instead of investing into SSD it's up to yourselves guys you can read more on the internet on what people use the RAM drives for and how you can benefit from it you know um there we go once again the ra the random write four kilobytes has crashed i can see it straight away but anyway maybe it's just a software issue if you guys know what was what is the problem here let me know 
Um, so back to the laptop, it has everything you need for the basic use. It has two USB ports. One of them is USB um, 3.0. It has a DVD drive and CD and you can write discs. Uh, battery life is okay-ish on the borderline of okay kind of. The screen is the same. It's okay. It's not great. It's not an IPS panel and the resolution is pretty low. But overall the laptop is quite nice. Um, nice finish a little bit of a fingerprint magnet not too heavy um battery is very light guys um because it's just few cells hence the battery life is not great so yeah um maybe we'll do a third part later on um if there will be an ssd upgrade but for the moment with ram and this is the performance results now ram doesn't really add any performance increase over the standard benchmarks but it would if you to use um, lots of memory intensive applications so yeah that pretty much sums up the video if you like the video click the like button and subscribe and thanks for watching have a nice day